Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing another colour grading tutorial. This time we're going to be using Adobe Lightroom to colour grade a portrait in professional ways. I've just got this portrait on my computer um, that I downloaded off the internet and I wanted to try and have a go at editing it with you guys. Um, so the idea is we're going to be trying to make this uh, image look like it's a professional portrait and not overdo it. So if you haven't already, go check out our website. We have a load of presets and we have a sale coming up soon or it's currently on depending on when we release this video. Also, go check us out on Instagram. Our links are the top links in the description. It'd be great if you could follow us over there but in the meantime let's get on with this video okay so firstly we're just going to dive straight in and we're going to go into the basic panel um, and I'm just going to drop down the highlights just because I want to make sure the shirt is more visible drop down the highlights lift up the shadows just to bring out some of the detail um, we're going to make sure we want to see a lot of detail in the eyes or as much detail as we can see in the eyes um, increase the whites and decrease the blacks <laughs> Okay, uh, and clarity, we're just going to drop the clarity down. We want this image to be quite soft. We don't want anything to be overly contrasty. Um, the idea is we're going to make the skin as smooth as possible. Um, so we're now just going to increase the exposure until we get something that we like the look of uh, and then decrease the highlights and everything else around that. Uh, you can see if I over-increase the highlights, the skin just looks a bit weird. So we're dropping down those highlights, raising those shadows, uh, maybe add a little bit of contrast not much to about plus 12 and then just decrease the uh, exposure just to make sure everything's fine. Um, vibrance and saturation, I'm probably not going to mess around with too much just yet. Uh, maybe increase the vibrance a bit and decrease the saturation ever so slightly, but nothing too much. We may come back and adjust that soon. Okay, so uh, we're going to close up the basic panel and we're going to head down on to the tone curve. Um, we're going to introduce a very simple S curve. So just put those three dots along the line as we usually do. Make sure the center dot is right the center or as best as you can get. Um, we're just going to increase the highlights and decrease the shadows. Maybe not so much. Just a very gradual S curve. And then we may introduce a little bit of fade into the shadows as well, just to soften the image as much as we can. One thing I like to do is either you can increase the fade by just dragging it straight up like that, or you could just drag this pin kind of to the right as well as up. Um, that just kind of gives it a nice fade, and we're going to see what it looks like if we fade off the highlights as well, um, just to soften this image. So if I turn the tone curve off, and turn it on again, you can see the difference that makes. Um, one thing we can try is coming onto the red, green, and blue individual tone curves and just creating an S curve in each of those. So just like this, like we did in the uh, full RGB. Go onto the blue, increase that, increase that, decrease that. And then in the green, just do the same as well. You may find that actually we just want to undo all of this, but I'm just having a look to see what effect it has on the overall image. So if I turn the tone curve off and turn it back on again, you can see the difference that has made to our image. Okay, if we come down to HSL, um, you'll currently notice this photo is ridiculously oversaturated and at the moment it just looks pretty horrible. So we're just going to scroll down all the way to saturation and first thing I would decrease these greens. I really do not like greens in por uh, portrait photos. So first thing, just drag the greens. I've dragged it all the way to minus 100. Get the yellows, drag the yellows down as well to about minus 90 something around there. And already this photo is beginning to look quite professional. If I press the backslash key, it shows us the before and we can see the after. It's a very contrasty photo, so we may want to go back to the basic panel to start off with just to take back some of that contrast so we can see a little bit more detail. Um, as for all the other colors, again, I'm just going to desaturate each of them ever so slightly. Um, and I'm going to choose one main color to keep with this photo. Well, two main colors, really. One being the lips. I want the lips and the eyes to really stand out. Now, the lips are in red and the eyes are in blue. But you can also see down here, there is also some blue in this image. So I'm going to get the blue and just really saturate that up a bit. And the purples and also the magentas. That way, the lips stand out and the eyes are going to stand out when we um, expose those correctly. Okay, now for luminance, I'm going to drag the uh, red luminance up a bit just because it kind of gives the skin a little bit more of a glow. We're going to get the orange slider and also drag that. Actually, we're probably going to drag the orange slider down to about minus nine um, just because it then gives us a bit more contour, contrast in the face. Uh, as for the yellows, probably drag those up. I like the sort of look it gives the hair. If you drag it up, it kind of gives the hair those nice highlights. Whereas if you drag it down, it just kind of looks a little bit fake. The greens, you can drag those down or up, depending on what style image you're going for. I personally like the background to be slightly darker. Uh, as for the blues, I'm going to whack the blues. You see, if I drag it all the way up, her eyes look really odd. Um, at the moment, I'm just going to drag them probably to about plus 60, plus 70. And then we're going to come back and we're going to correct that using um, the brush tool. Purples, 
pick those up as well. And the magentas, I don't want to do too much because then the lips are going to start to look slightly fake. See if I drag them down completely, the lips look really odd. If I drag it up, they just look super reflective. Um, so we're probably going to drag them down, I imagine, to about minus 10. Okay, now we can come onto the hue slide, and this is where we can really mess around with the colours if we wanted to. I may try and make the yellows a little bit more orange, just to kind of make the skin tone slightly more natural and slightly less green. Drag the oranges down ever so slightly as well. You see if I drag it too far to the right, the image starts to look green. Um, I think we're going to take out as much of the green as we can in this image. Um, the reds will probably end up leaving alone. Maybe drag those down to about minus five. Nothing too drastic, but just a little bit, just to make the skin color a little bit more realistic. Uh, again, if you press the backslash key, you can see the original, and this is the after. So if I come down now onto the purples, I kind of want to make the skin tone as natural as I can, and also the lips as natural as I can. Um, currently, I think if I drag the magenta all the way to the right, we're getting a better look for the lips. So I'm gonna increase the magenta, probably going to drag the purple down a bit because you can see it affects the blues down here. Okay, so I think that's it for the HSL slider. Okay, so for greens, I'm just gonna drag the green slider down. Uh, the aquas, I don't wanna add too much teal into this image. So I'm gonna get the blue slider, I'm gonna drag the blue down, but counteract that by dragging the aqua all the way up. So that's it for the HSL slider. Uh, if I turn off the HSL slider, you can see the difference that has made to this whole image. Usually you'll find the HSL slider just for minor um, edits, but for this one I decided to go really all out with the tone curve which then introduced a lot of saturation and vibrance into all of the colors and So what we've done with the HSL slider is just drop those down in each just to kind of make the image that much better Okay, so we're now going to come into camera calibration This is where we can do some more color grading more color editing um, And we're just going to probably mess around mainly with just the saturation We will have a go with the hues if we want to in a minute, um, but I'm just going to uh, Increase the blue primary saturation. I'm going to Probably decrease the red primary to about minus five to minus ten, uh, and I think increase the I think also increase the green primary to about plus twenty. Um, so you see, if I turn off the camera calibration and turn it on again, you see it makes a slight different color change to the skin. It kind of glows a little bit more with color now. One thing you can try, I don't think it's going to work in this case, is decrease the blue primary and increase the red primary. You see there, it's kind of given a much more orange look to the skin. Um, I think in this case, I'm probably gonna leave that. I may just do it to about five and minus five on each. Nothing too drastic. Down the saturation a little bit as well there. Okay, so that is the camera calibration. Just done a minor change, but nothing too drastic. Okay, so we're basically there now completely with the overall, uh, all we can do with these. And um, we're now gonna come onto the brush tool and we're gonna try and edit these eyes so we can see them more. Um, here, you have gotta be really careful and I've been looking at this image for a while so it's possible I'm gonna overdo this, but you always want to kind of, with, with the eyes, you don't wanna oversaturate, you don't wanna over brighten the eyes just because it can begin to look slightly unnatural. I just wanna bring out the eyes a little bit more in this image just because they're quite contrasty at the moment. And um, what I do recommend is once you've done this edit, you then come back to it a day or day or two later and then make any final adjustments that you can once your eyes have had time to rest. Okay, so all I'm going to do is just draw over the eye area with this brush. At the moment you won't be able to see any change really, because all it's doing is increasing the exposure very slightly. Okay, so I'm going to get the shadow slider and just drag the shadows up here. I've dragged it all that to plus 100 um, and I'm also going to drag the highlights up as well and maybe increase the exposure ever so slightly. I don't want to do it too much, um, I just want to make sure that the eyes aren't too contrasty, so I'm then going to drop the contrast to about minus 20, minus 40. In fact, minus 50 might even just do it. Okay, so if I zoom in now to the eyes, we can really work on um, these eyes and make sure they look perfect. So I can either, so I'm then gonna increase the whites just to kind of bring out the white in the eyes. Um, I'm probably not gonna do plus 100 there. I'm probably gonna do that to about plus 30. Put the blacks down to about minus 10. Now, for those of you who don't know the difference between blacks and shadows, blacks are the dark colors that the um, that has lost all detail. So what it's basically doing is just making those blacks darker. If you were to drag all the blacks all the way up, there would be no data there that the camera has captured, so it just begins to look a bit weird. Um, so the blacks are very different to the shadows. The shadows you can re uh, retrieve data or parts of the image from, the blacks you can't. So usually we drop the blacks and heighten the whites. Uh, as for saturation, if I drag the saturation up, you can see the eye begins to look really unnatural. Um, so I'm gonna drag the saturation down a little bit We'll say minus six, something around there. Okay, now what you can do is mess around with the temperature if you want to and also the tint. Um, I think these eyes look a little bit cold, so I'm gonna try and drag up the color 
and see if I can make it. So all I've done there is I've increased the temperature to about plus three just because I think it looked a little bit too blue. Um, sharpness, you can also drag the sharpness up just to make sure the eyes are really, really clear if you want to. Um, noise, just increase that noise ever so slightly because what's happening here is with all this color grading and color editing, we are actually introducing noise because we're over editing the image. Um, so we're just gonna increase the noise there, or noise cancellation and just sort of smooth out that image. Okay, I think we're probably done. Um, one thing we can try and do is press new and literally just paint on the iris here. That's one iris and paint on the other iris. And then increase the shadows, uh, brighten up the shadows on each of those irises just to try and bring out a little bit more detail. Um, you could go mad and start to decrease the temperature in the eyeballs, in the actual iris, just to kind of make those eyes really pop if that's the look you're going for. But one thing I will say, if you're editing zoomed in, it may look all right, but when you zoom back out again, which it probably will look the case, you see the eyes now just look really unrealistic. Um, so we're going to decrease the shadows, we're gonna drop the highlights in those irises, just because the reflections look a little bit odd. Maybe drop those whites. That is it. We are now done with the eyes, I think. There's nothing more we can really salvage from those eyes. Uh, you'll see if I press the before, they're already quite dark here in the image already. So we've tried to brighten them up as much as we can without looking too unrealistic. Um, this photo is going to look very, very airbrushed. So that is the uh, photo done, pretty much. Now what we're going to do is come into the brush tool again, um, and we're going to try and smooth out this skin. So create a new brush by pressing new, double click on effects to reset all these to zero, and then just come down to noise and drag the noise to about plus 55. And then we're just going to paint over the skin. And the idea is here, we're just smoothing out the skin um, as much as we can. In fact, I may even drag that up to plus 100. I'm going to drop the highlights ever so slightly as well. Once again, I think it's kind of useful here just to zoom in on the area we're working. Another thing we can do to try and smooth out this face is also decrease the clarity. When we decrease... Decreasing the clarity is kind of like decreasing the sharpness and also the contrast at the same time. Um, and basically it's just going to make that skin have that more airbrushed, smooth look. That is it. I think we're basically done now with this edit. There's not a lot more we can really do. Um, I might start to work on the hair. Um, but other than that, if, you t if I turn off the uh, brush tool, you can see what it looked like before we did anything with the brush. If you look at the skin, uh, the eyes are the main difference here. But if you look at the skin... Um, and how smooth it now looks like when I turn the brush back on. Um, it's a massive change to the whole image. Okay, the next thing we're going to try and do is, one, we are going to work on the highlights in the hair, and two, see if Lightroom can sort out any of these straggly hairs. If not, then you could always put it into Photoshop and deal with it there, um, but we're not going to do that in today's video if Lightroom can't deal with it. So come over to this button here, uh, and then we're going to select Heal, and we're just going to decrease the brush size just enough um, that we can work with the detailed, these sort of areas here of hair and just paint over them. And we're going to see what Lightroom can do. Finally, the last thing I want to do is try and just sort of work out these highlights in the hair. So if I press new, uh, double click an effect just to reset everything back to zero. Um, we're going to increase clarity, add some noise reduction, and we're going to sort of come up here to highlights, drag the highlights up and the contrast up to about plus 36. And all we're going to do is find the natural highlights in the hair and we're just going to paint over those with a brush. And all we're doing is trying to uh, accentuate these highlights in the hair just to make the just to make the hair look that sort of more glossy, um, slightly more golden than it currently is. Um, I know at the moment it really doesn't really need a lot doing to it, but with a lot of people, with a lot of their photos, um, you'll find unless the lighting is really good like this photo, I don't know whoever took this photo has done a really good job um, of the lighting, but sometimes you'll find that the hair doesn't really have much detail going on with it, doesn't really have very good lighting. Um, other than that, I think we're done with today's edits. There's not a lot more we can really do. Um, obviously, everyone's edit's going to be slightly different, but this is it. Uh, if I show you the before and the after, that's what it looks like. Um, I will show you side by side what the before and after looked like, just so you can have a proper complete comparison. Um, one of the main differences that you've, we've done here is really brought out those eyes and smoothed out the skin. So I hope this video was useful for some of you guys who really want to get into the more professional type photography, studio type portraits. Um, this is the sort of edit that I think looks kind of nice. I really like the soft skin and those really vivid eyes. Okay, so that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Like I said at the beginning, uh, go check out our website and our Instagram. It'd be great if you could. If you have any other video ideas, drop them down below in the comments. It'd be great to see them. Other than that, if you did enjoy this video, it'd be great to smash the thumbs up and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one. Live long and prosper.